Our second guest is one of the top goalkeepers in all of college soccer. Tulsa native Kayla Little has started 65 of the 67 games she has played for the Notre Dame women's soccer team, and her goals against average has gotten better every year. Her freshman year, Kayla had a goals against average of .89 and an 80% saves percentage. In four games this year, Kayla's goals against average is a minuscule .48 goals per game, and she is stopping 90% of the shots that come her way. Kayla is also working hard in the classroom. She is enrolled in Notre Dame's top-ranked Mendoza College of Business and is pursuing a major in information technology management while also pursuing a secondary major in psychology through the College of Arts and Letters. We are delighted Kayla has somehow managed to carve out some time in her busy schedule to visit with us today. Here are your hosts for this segment, James Onwalu, Rachel Naslin, and Kayla Little. What's going on, Kayla? Hey, guys. Thanks for coming out to talk with us. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. So it's interesting because, you know, Jack obviously usually does this, but somehow <laughs> we uh, took over this segment. So, um, I mean, your fourth year, uh, you know, four-year starter, what's that mean to you? Well, first of all, I can't believe I'm a senior already. I know, right? We all came <laughs> it's in together, crazy. so it's like the time has flown for sure. I I, I'm graduating in December, so I can be out yeah. to hear that. Last her off for you. It's crazy. Um, but especially being a captain as well. It's, I feel a lot of responsibility, um, especially being a goalkeeper, you're kind of like the general for the back line and the defense. Um, so just having all that experience under my belt, I think has really helped um, this year, especially like with new players stepping up um, and a pretty new lineup after graduating, um, uh, I think six seniors last year. And then also being a captain is a very big honor. Um, and I think it has kind of forced me to step up into more of a leadership role um, off the field. I think on the field, I'm naturally a very vocal player, especially as a goalkeeper, like I kind of have to be. And so now that I am a captain, I think just the off the field stuff is like I'm more aware of it now. And I think just i become better at addressing it and dealing with it in an appropriate manner. Yeah, I've been to a bunch of your games. I've, <laughs> I've been to some other, uh, you know, women's soccer games as well. You are very vocal, I have to yes. be honest. And I've, that's one thing I I hadn't really watched women's soccer until like a couple of years ago, came and checked you guys out. <laughs> are most goaltenders vocal like you are or are you, you know, the special case? I think most of us are vocal pretty vocal like to a certain degree um i think because i'm fairly outgoing and also fairly loud naturally that that also plays a role in how loud i am on the field as well you guys have had some great momentum coming into the season um with five um unbeaten games correct and correct. Um, you guys just came off of a great tie against stanford this past weekend Yes, uh, we went out to California this weekend and played Santa Clara and Stanford, and we tied both of those games. So, And those were both good re results for us. I mean, obviously, whenever you go on an away trip, you want to come back with a win um, or wins. But I think we definitely learned from the weekend and um, really like built a lot of momentum and confidence starting ACC play next week. So what's it mean for ties? I mean, some people that don't really follow soccer, like a tie in football, that would <laughs> that would never really happen, happen, you know? So what does it mean, a tie compared to a win and a loss? Um, so in soccer, you have your regulation time, and then you have an overtime, and then a second overtime if needed, and those are golden goal. Um, and so ties don't really... I mean, it really depends on the context. Like, we tied Santa Clara, who was right below us so that's not gonna help us but we tied Stanford who was ranked first and second in some polls um, so that's really gonna help us um, so they're not like super detrimental if you do tie but they're also not gonna like fly you up the rankings if you tie like a really good team either yeah. so they're kind of neutral on that scale do yeah. ties count going into ACC's because um do they count towards your standing in it or? No, so like we have non-conference games and then we have conference games. So like when we, there are eight teams that are chosen for the ACC tournament and that's, those eight teams are completely based on your ACC standings. 
so the non-conference games aren't taken into consideration. Okay. Well, aside from the ties, you guys are killing it this year. Uh, but the, you guys have a bunch of younger guys stepping in. Girls, I should say. <laughs> younger girls stepping <laughs> Ladies. in. I'm, Ladies. I'm used to, uh, I'm used to my Irish. team. Lady Sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> but uh, you guys have only let up four goals. Why, why do you think that is? You guys have young girls on uh, the defense? or? Yeah, so we graduated three starters on defense. Um, so we had to f fill those shoes, obviously. And um, – the four in the back line have done absolutely amazing this season. It's been a lot of fun playing with people who maybe are a little less inexperienced because they don't have a set role yet on the field. And they just, we've kind of been able to explore like our shape a little more and just like grow as a group together, um, which has been a really fun process to be a part of, especially looking at us from where we started August 2nd beginning of preseason to where we are now like the bounds of improvement that I've seen and I think the team has seen the team has seen and like all the confidence they've gained over the course of those two months is like really really exciting to see and yeah. I think even moving forward like um all everyone who's like new to I guess starting this year like I just see their confidence building and building um and us just gaining more experience together and I mean, cohesion on the field is always important. And the more we play and the longer the season goes on, I think that is just going to improve. Yeah, I think confidence is huge, especially since you guys are going from Friday to Sunday, right? Like, you mm -hmm. only have 24 hours mm -hmm. if you don't have a good game to turn it around. Um, obviously, you have a bunch of, you know, you're touching a lot of the defensive players since they're right there. But as a captain, how, to, how do you really affect the, like, attack and mid midsection of the uh, players you know um it I mean it is challenging definitely impacting the forwards and even the midfielders but everyone plays defense uh, a keeper is not the only one that gives up a goal it has to go through 11 people on the field um and so when I do get the chance I'm trying to direct and communicate with midfielders or forwards whenever it's necessary um but definitely like at least in games it might be harder, but in practice, um, myself or the other captains, like if we're struggling or there's low energy, we'll maybe like during the water break or during a appropriate break in the drill, we'll try and like bring the team together, raise the energy. Um, so it is definitely easier like in practice because I'm around more people in a more like compact area. Yeah. What is practice like for you right now during your season? you're playing a lot of games yeah um so it's got to be some time for recovery yeah oh yeah we we had two glorious <laughs> days off this week after Love california that. that's nice um and then so we always have a day off i think that's required by the ncaa yeah. thank you ncaa yes. <laughs> thank <laughs> um but then we normally we hit it hard for normally two two days of practice and then that third and possibly even fourth day of practice during the week are a little bit lighter. We're going over more like detail things and tactical things with positioning and um, shape for, with the team. Uh, so the coaching staff does a great job with like balance and keeping us um, healthy and like energized and just um, not like wearing us down, obviously, especially going to the ACC. We play Thursday, Sunday. So is the ACC game Thursday as well or is it yeah, just Sunday? Yeah, so they changed it. Um, two years ago, I think, where you play Thursday, Sunday for ACC, so okay. we do have a little bit longer break in between games because ACC games are normally so intense. Yeah. Um, so, so that's guys, really nice. Can you guys feel that coming then? You're like our practice is a little bit different. You guys oh, yeah. a little bit more on point going in. Like, you know, Rachel was asking me earlier, we definitely feel the pressure going into a game like Michigan State. Like you guys feel, you know, we have Syracuse on Sunday. Like we need to clean that up today, you, you know? Yeah, do you um, scout for it or watch film? I'm not sure how it is in soccer. No, yeah, we um, – well, at least for our team, I don't know how it is for other soccer teams. Um, we normally get in a scouting report a day or two before the game um, just so it's fresh in our mind. And then our coaching staff will send it out and we'll be able to review it before the game if we want. But – this year, um, and even last season as well, our big focus is just on how we're going to play in that game. Um, like we're going to be aware of key players on the other team and certain aspects of different set pieces that they might have. Um, but really, it's just focusing on us and our play and our game. 
um, and just taking it to them. So like in practices and stuff, we mainly focus on us. Yeah, because yeah. soccer is much more reactionary, right? Like, yeah, it's very, very fluid. Yeah, you can't anticipate really what someone's going to do mm -hmm. right before the game. So you have to kind of prepare in all aspects. Yeah, definitely. So I know you guys had, like we spoke about, you guys have some new guys and you know, on the team, but you're also missing a couple of players from last year playing in the U20 World Cup. Uh, do you see that <laughs> impacting you, or do you follow those those players and as they're going through the World Cup? Yeah, so Sabrina Flores and Natalie Jacobs are taking the semester off to play with the U20 national team, as you said. Um, and they let the team know before preseason, and they were both here during preseason. Um, and we're in full support of them, and we've been keeping up with them. They're currently at camp right now. They're playing, I believe, Brazil and then South Korea this upcoming week. So we'll probably try and catch one of those games as, as a team and watch them and support them. Um, and, I mean, we obviously wish they were here with us this season, but we know they're following um, their dreams with the U20 national team. And I think that the players we do have here have done an incredible job of stepping up and filling the roles that they vacated. Um, and so, I mean, we miss them, but we're, we look great going forward. So Awesome. Well, we're excited to see you guys play yeah. uh, ACCs this weekend, and thanks for coming and joining us. We wish you luck. Yeah, thanks, guys. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs>